If you want more spots for your region at the 2023 CrossFit Games, you just need to go out and earn them. Of course, to do so, you might need a time machine. And even then, it could be impossible to balance the scales. Welcome back to the channel. So news has come out about the 2023 CrossFit Games season and the worldwide ranking system that will be used to allocate game spots. And of course, everybody has an opinion and has started speculating. It's almost like Bosman knew this would happen. Barbell Spin was talking about it with Tyler Watkins, Mike Halpin put up some posts, Brian Friend let us know what he thinks, even Hiller put up a video actually in favour of this new system. That was probably a surprise to a lot of people. But at least looking at the viewing figures on the YouTube channel, not that many people have watched the CrossFit Games podcast where Chase actually sits down with Dave Eubanks and Adrian Bosman to talk about this new system. So I'm just going to play a few clips from the conversation they had on that podcast and then just interject a few points as to maybe what that means in the bigger picture or what other people might have mentioned. And then one big issue that I don't think anybody else has really mentioned, but I think could have a tremendous effect on how game spots are allocated and could really be an insurmountable obstacle for some of the regions. Now, the fact that nobody else, to my knowledge, has mentioned this, of course, could mean that I'm just crazy. So feel free to let me know if that's the case in the comments. So first of all, let's see what we're talking about. So that's that's the big picture overview. What's new this season is that we're going to introduce a worldwide ranking system where every athlete is going to be given points effectively for their placement in the CrossFit Games season. So that's the open quarters, semis, and the games if they make it that far. And um, based on that, they'll be given an overall rank, and that will be used for a couple of different things over the course of the season. So every stage of the CrossFit Games season has been elevated. It now has more weight and meaning to it. And then people's rankings. Well, it's interesting that Boz said would be used for a number of things. So I'm intrigued if there are other things going to come out that your ranking could affect, maybe off-season competition, something like that. Who knows? But for now, we do know that it will affect the worldwide ranking and how many spots a region gets for the games. Now, they have released a minimum number of game spots for each competition. So North America will get five spots for both the East and West competition. Europe will get five spots. Oceania will get three. Asia and South America will both get two. And Africa will get one. So that means for some of these competitions, at least with regards to the minimum spots, there's been no change to how many people could go to the games. Of course, for North America and Europe, they've both been halved. So we do know that this is going to work based off of the whole season. But how exactly does the calculation work? What we're not quite ready to talk about yet are some of the specific calculations that were being used. Um, because we're just not there yet, we've got a few more models to run. Eubanks is a little closer to that. He can speak to that as well. Um, but we, uh, we don't want to put out details that are not yet finished. Um, and so those are going to come out a little bit closer to the open. So people are going to have to sit tight a little bit around those. Um, so the simple answer is we don't know. In fact, CrossFit don't know. So if anybody says this is how the calculation works and this is how they'll determine how many spots each region gets, well, they don't know because CrossFit themselves haven't yet fully decided on how the calculation is going to work. But they have given us a kind of framework or a method that they are using. Sure. Well, so the Cliff Notes version is that we're really taking the past two years of athletic performance for each athlete. So think about it this way that when you know we have your two years now when the open happens in 23 the 21 open will go off whatever points wow. you earn then and the 23 open will become your points now likewise when you move to quarterfinals your 21 quarterfinals will be removed your 23 quarterfinals will show up there and so what that means is that you know we're trying to preserve sort of the most recent athletic you know events that you've participated in to see what the the kind of closest snapshot is of your fitness without just being your performance in the last season, but the last two years. And so then after quarterfinals in 23, we'll be able to have all of the qualifiers, like Boz mentioned earlier, that move on to semifinals. We'll have exactly their points for their real last two years of competition mm -hmm. to be able to allocate what that strength of field is for their you know, respective semifinals and their respective divisions between the men and the women. 
So this is where things start to get a little tricky because now you're saying that we're going back two years. We're going to start looking at people's open performance over the last two years. But we know that many athletes felt the open didn't matter. They did just enough to get through. Now, that isn't because of laziness or because they just didn't care about the open. It was part of their strategy going towards the games. They didn't need to peak for the open, to peak for quarterfinals. They wanted to peak at the games. Now, if CrossFit wants to change that and say, no, every stage of the season really matters and you need to be giving it your all, fair enough. It does mean athletes will probably have to adapt and change the way they train and the way they plan to peak for these events, but that can all be part of the competition if they know in advance. But what's not fair is to retrospectively go back and judge them on a performance for a test that they didn't think mattered that much. Now, some good news is that actually they're only really going to be going back one year because as we've seen, it's going to be two years rolling. So that actually means technically now they're looking at 21-22, but as soon as the 23 open happens, well, that 21 open will be stricken from the record and they'll be looking at your 22 and 23 performance, same as quarterfinals. But for me, that's not the biggest problem with going back a few years and looking at your past performance. I will get to that in a minute. But just to have even more context, let's just hear what Dave Eubanks has to say about the new system. Yeah, so I mean, the, the basic bullet points that we're sort of using internally as you know, kind of our guiding light, our North Star, when we're determining this you know, strength of field and the season point stuff is that in general, a simpler system is better than a more complex one. We mm-hmm. want to be able to have it to be easily understood or easily understood and easily explained to people. Um, we definitely want, w- one of the big rules is that uh, whoever wins the CrossFit Games on a specific season, so let's say you know Justin Medeiros for last year, he is the one that needs to have accrued the most points over the 22 year period because he's the fittest. Um, so you know things like that are really what we're looking at to make sure that this kind of passes the sniff test if, when we look at it from 10,000 feet. Okay. And I'll kind of build upon what Boz said earlier too. And um, he, he's right. There's lots of different ways to slice this pie. And what we know fundamentally is there is no such thing as a perfect system. When we develop this, but what there right. is is you know good discussion internally. We decide on which compromises we want to make, uh, why we want to make those, and we have good reasons behind those. And frankly, I'm really looking forward to kind of the the CrossFit uh, you know ecosystems debate and discussion over all this because I'm sure. Are you looking forward to that? Are you really though? Like, no, I am. Really, <laughs> honestly, I am. Um, because like I said, you know, I, I'm fully aware and the, you know, the people we've been working with this on are fully aware there is no such thing as a perfect system, but I'm right. sure that when we actually do land upon one, we will feel really good about the fact that it has been through its paces. We have, mm-hmm. you know, really made decisions for the right reasons to get, you know, the right outcome out of this that is as fair as we can make it to everyone. So a few things to note immediately. It's going to be a simple system. Well, that's good news for me. I'm no Tyler Watkins or Mike Halpin. A simple system, that's something I can get my head around. It's not going to be a perfect system. Well, it's good that they can admit that now because I don't think there is a perfect system that can be formed. A system that can be improved upon, definitely. A perfect system, unlikely. The fact that they're looking forward to the conversations and speculations around this, that's a good thing because let's be honest, those conversations are already happening and if anything, I'm about to add to it. But this comment about the sniff test, so you know, Justin Medeiros, he won the game, so obviously he should have the most points when we're looking at somebody's ranking. So that together with other comments that we've heard, it does imply that the most important thing is the ranking somebody gets at the CrossFit Games. And I know that some people definitely agree with that because the Games is the ultimate test. You can't compare it to the Open, to the quarterfinals, to the semifinals. It's a different beast. The problem that I see, though, is this. If we could say that athlete A could outperform athlete B at the Open, at the quarterfinals, at the semifinals, but then athlete B considerably outperforms athlete A at the Games, something we have seen happen, Well, surely the more athletes we send to the games, the more likely this is to happen. And even if a low finish at the games is worth more than a higher finish at quarterfinals or semifinals, doesn't that mean the advantage is heavily in the favor of whoever had the most athletes at the games in person? So it would seem that the more athletes a region is able to send in person, the bigger advantage that's going to give them next year. So if we're looking back 
two years, we know that North America had more athletes at the Games than anyone else because they had more spots awarded to them. That should set them up for a huge advantage in the worldwide ranking going into next year. Well, that would mean that they would get more spots. More spots means the following year, guess what? Once again, they have that advantage. And we will see this cycle just continue. And someone could reason, well, justifiably so. At the moment, they are the most dominant region. They have the most athletes that deserve those game spots. The problem is with this system, if that cycle continues, it means other regions don't just need to catch up to America who have that massive advantage of being the birthplace of CrossFit and just having done it longer than anyone else. They actually need to surpass them by a considerable amount in order to chip away at those extra spots that they're getting year on year. Now, as I've said, I'm not a stats guy. I could be completely wrong. So please feel free to let me know if I'm misunderstanding the situation somehow. But even when Chase mentioned how this adds weight to all the different stages of competition, it's still interesting to see Boz's reaction. And so that is kind of interesting to see how athletes respond to that. Um, and again, a lot of that's going to net out as far as how heavily it's weighted when right. the um, specific points come down. But at the end of the day, yes, uh, we're hoping that that does incentivize athletes to do their best in these competitions um, so that they can reflect accurately the competitiveness of their region. And therefore, the system is more accurate than it could be otherwise uh, if athletes are just taking the mentality of, like, well, I just need to get you know, top X right, to get yeah. through to the next stage. So yes, while it may push athletes to work a bit harder at each stage, it depends on how heavily weighted each stage of the competition is. So once again, it may not be beneficial to push as hard as you can in the open and quarterfinals if that could negatively impact your performance at the Games. If your performance at the Games then has a bigger influence next year on how many spots you earn for your region. And if it is that heavily weighted at the games, well, then just go back to the things I just mentioned about the advantage that North America has having had so many spots for so long. So let's just finish with Boz's admonition to the CrossFit community. Yeah, and I'll, I'll jump on that too and say I feel similarly. You know, we've heard for so long now from some, you know, very vocal fans uh, in different parts of the world that they're absolutely certain that their region definitely needs more spots. You're like, okay, cool. Let's see if that actually bears out. I'm really excited to see, you know, how much of that is true, how much of that is just the bus of people loving the the athletes in their region and as they should, you know, nothing wrong with that. So I'm really curious to see when we actually put numbers to it, um, how it plays out. And I'm really excited to see in some regions, the disparity between men and women. I yeah. think that you're going to see in some regions, it's like, man, the women in this region are just crushing and they're going to, they're <laughs> going to gain a ton of spots, but the dudes, eh, maybe you just uh, <laughs> keep in your minimum, you know what I mean? Or vice versa. So I'm yeah. really curious to see the difference there in some regions. And I'm really curious to see, you know, how close some of these uh, very vocal critics of their qualification spots um, mm-hmm. actually are. So Boz is saying, if you want more spots for your region because you've been vocal thinking that you deserve them, well, now's your time to prove it. Go out and show them that you need those extra spots. Australia, we're looking at you. Of course, if game spots matter, well, you've only had three for the last two years to try and balance with North America's 20. But hey, do your best. Of course, at this point, it is all speculation as the calculation hasn't been made clear and exactly how they're going to weigh things. So feel free to let me know in the comments what you think about this worldwide ranking system. Things that you like, things that you don't like, I'd love to hear them. Hopefully, we'll soon be given some more facts and it can be more facts and less speculation and you know I'm a fan of that. So until then, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in a future video.